Welcome everyone to the information session for the supportive coordination request for qualifications held by the Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Strategy. My name is Soledad Carrillo. I co-lead the Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Strategy. And here is the team that's going to be supporting this information session today. Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Martinez, leading the strategy with uh, Soledad. Welcome to our info session for um, these requests for qualifications. Hello, my name is Joanna Armstrong and I am the contracting and procurement specialist and here in support of both Alicia and Soledad. So the agenda for our time together today is we're going to go over a brief overview of the Best Starts for Kids and then a little bit about the Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Strategy. Then we'll get into the review of key elements of the request for qualifications. We'll have an overview of the rating criteria. And then at the end, uh, we'll have a mini Zoom grants training. Here's the mission. Uh, Best Starts for Kids strengthens families and communities so that babies are born healthy, children thrive, and establish a strong foundation for life and young people grow into happy, healthy adults. Here are the principles of Best Starts for Kids. Our approach is grounded in promotion, prevention, early intervention, and policy and systems change. Uh, we do believe every child is born full of possibilities. That's why we prioritize promotion and invest early in our babies and young children. We also recognize that children and young people need prevention supports to establish a strong foundation for life. To sustain the gains made by investing early, we have early intervention, meaning provide supports early to children and young people who need additional resources to succeed. Finally, we do have change. We have work to change systems and policies so that all communities in our region can thrive and prosper regardless of race or place. And we do so by taking an overall strength-based approach. Here's a little bit about our strategies work. Um, here's the vision for our work. We envision a King County that values the efforts of families to provide caring environments for children. Toward this goal, King County is increasing its commitment to prioritizing the social and emotional health of all infants, toddlers, and young children, prenatal to five, and their families. This was developed in community with the advisory groups uh, that we partnered with during a um, the Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Landscape Analysis and Strategic Plan uh, that included a Council of Parents, a Strategic Planning Committee of experts in different areas of infant and early childhood mental health, and also a statewide advisory board. In our, in our infant and early childhood mental health strategy, it's very important for us to focus on the baby. But we also understand that the baby has a lot of caregivers. So here in, in King County, Best Starts for Kids, our strategy, the infant and early childhood mental health strategy, really is here to support communities uh, uh, and organizations that are really holding the providers, that are holding the caregivers, that are holding the baby. So we keep in mind the baby throughout all, all our work. To be able to make the true change that we want to transform in our systems and be able to serve all children in King County, especially young children and families, we know that we must support uh, the people who are dedicate themselves to caring for our youngest children and their families. So these bodies of work that we're going to share next are informed by uh, the strategic planning team that helped us develop our goals and priorities. So this, uh, who is this request for qualifications for? The Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Strategy is seeking to partner with up to two organizations to improve and support the social and emotional outcomes for young children and their families through supporting the people that work with them. We've um, grouped the work into two different bodies of work. The first one is reflective consultation groups coordination. 
And the second one is training workshops coordination. And for the duration of this presentation, we'll reference it as training coordination. I'm gonna get into some details about each of the bodies of work. Relationship building is very important uh, to be able to re build relationships with all partners. Subcontract and onboard reflective consultants. We need an organization that can provide the support and logistical capacity, which may include uh, scheduling and um, attendance sheets, different uh, pro pro programmatic tools for reflective consultants. This organization will also be co-planning, scheduling, attending meetings with related to reflective consultation. This organization will also need to support any emerging needs with reflective consultations that may occur in groups or across programs. They'll also need to organize and manage at least one annual reflective practice training. They'll also manage invoicing and monthly payments for reflective consultants. They need to adhere to the data collection uh, according to Best Starts for Kids and the Department of Community and Human Services Performance Measurement and Evaluation Plan. We're also asking for flexibility to support any other related activities. The next body of work is training coordination. It's not listed here, but similar as the first body of work, we want to partner with an organization that can build relationships across all partners. They'll also need to identify, recruit, subcontract, and onboard any trainers or facilitators. They'll need to hold the logistical aspects of training, which includes advertising, registration, accessibility, evaluations, and more. They need to implement a minimum of six infant and early childhood mental health related trainings a year. They would be co-creating any training material, co-facilitating training feedback and debriefings. They'll process invoices, provide timely payments, participant stipends, and time reimbursements as applicable. They'll also manage the Best Starts for, Best Starts for Kids workshop website. They'll provide certificates of attendance and or offerings of continuing education credits. They'd also need to adhere to the data collection according to Best Search for Kids and DCHS performance measurement and evaluation plan. And we also are asking for some flexibility to support any other related activity. So I'm gonna move us into the minimum qualifications. For the first body of work, reflective consultation groups coordination. We are, uh, the minimum qualifications is the capacity to subcontract with up to 25 to 30 reflective consultants who will be serving 100 to 150 groups. Three to five years of complex project management or systems coordination experience, the ability to work with diverse reflective consultants and group participants. For the second body of work, training coordination, it's three to five years of complex project management or systems coordination experience and the ability to work with a diverse group of trainers, workshop facilitators, and participants as well. Best Search for Kids invites all interested and eligible organizations to submit their qualifications for one or both bodies of work. This may include private agencies, not-for-profit agencies, community-based organizations, tribes and tribal organizations, schools and school districts, public or governmental agencies serving communities in King County, eligible small nonprofits and community-based organizations are encouraged to submit qualifications. I'm gonna move us into the timeline. This, uh, this is from the beginning of the release of the request for qualifications, which was Friday, July 29th. We held an information session on August 5th. That wasn't recorded. Uh, we are providing this recorded uh, session for anyone to be able to review the uh, qualifications and key elements of the RFQ. So the final, the day that it's due is September 16th at 2 p.m. 
The final day to request any technical assistance is September 9th. The final day to contact uh, King County with any questions is also September 9th. And the second part of September, we'll be reviewing any submissions and they'll be rated. We may hold an interview um, interviews in October. Any organization that submits their qualifications will also be notified in October of the status of their submissions. October, November, and December, quarter four of this year, we intend to hold any contract negotiations. And we hope to start this work in January of 2023. So I wanna provide a summary of the key element information. We have funding available up to $1 million. Um, the submissions are due Friday, the 16th of September. Contract period is potentially January 2023 through December 2025. Uh, we're estimating that each body of work is about uh, $500,000 each. And we anticipate awarding up to two organizations. I'm going to share a little bit about data and evaluation. So the primary purpose of per performance measurement and evaluation is to inform the ongoing work. We want to understand which activities are effective and why. We want also want to support shared and transparent responsibility for each program's success. We also want to comply with initiative reporting requirements, and we want to offer transparency to the public about the programs we fund and their outcomes. So any organization that would be partnering with us uh, would need to adhere to any data and evaluation requirements. So here are the submission tips. Um, Joanna, I invite you to step in and share. Absolutely. As you are all beginning your applications in Zoom grants, please note that you would submit your qualifications for either one body of work or both bodies of work. And so if you wish to submit an application for both bodies of work, you have two options. You can either submit your qualifications in a single application. And if you do that, um, you would select both in Zoom grants and then make sure that as you respond to each question, you're clear about which response is for which body of work. These responses will be reviewed separately. Your, um, a, a, each body of work, the uh, reflective consultation groups coordination and training coordination will each be evaluated separately. The other option you have to apply for both bodies of work is um, to uh, submit two completely separate applications. So you can start one for one body of work, complete and submit that, and then begin another one for the other body of work. Thank you, Joanna. So we have budget tips as well. Um, budget should be developed for the length of time um, an organization is submitting qualifications for. So if an organization would like to submit uh, their qualifications and would only expect or anticipate contracting for a year, then their budget should be for that year. If an organization or individual is submitting their qualifications for three years, then the budget should be estimating three years. If you're applying as a single organization, you only need to upload a single budget. If it's multiple individuals or organizations that are applying in partnership, they would need to identify a lead organization and also include detailed budgets for each of the partners um, that are submitting qualifications. The budget can include uh, an hourly rate or an FTE, uh, depending on the structure of, of each organization. So I'm going to go into scoring of the criteria. This is how the review panel is going to be looking at and scoring any qualifications. So it's going to be each section is going to be scored from zero to five, and I'll get more into those details on the next slide. But I would like for us to take a moment. Um, a number of and qualifications that would be rated a five 
um, would need to provide an innovative, detailed, thorough response to the criteria, and that it clearly demonstrates a high level of experience with and understanding of the requirements. So a, a submission might be rated a three if it shows an acceptable understanding or experience with the criteria, includes sufficient details, uh, to be considered meeting the minimum requirements, and it represents best practices or an adequate alternative. Submissions may be scored a zero if it does not address any component of the criteria or no information was provided. So this is what the scoring criteria is. In Zoom grants, the first two questions is going to be asking uh, if the individual organization meets the minimum qualifications. And it's also going to ask which body of work is being, um, are qualifications being submitted for. Those don't have a score. We just simply want that to know that information before getting into rating the criteria. Then there's six rating criteria, equity and social justice, collaboration and communication, infant and early childhood mental health knowledge, expertise and approaches, organizational capacity and timeline, budget and fiscal, and data collection and evaluation. Each of these will be scored zero through five. Then they'll be multiplied by the weight that each criteria holds. So for example, equity and social justice, if, a, if that criteria gets scored a five, it would be multiplied by four for a total max of 20 points for reflective consultation coordination, and it can also score a max of 20 for training coordination as well. Each, uh, as Joanna mentioned, each body of work will be rated separately, so um, each body of work can score up to 100 points. Uh, Alicia or Joanna, would you add anything here? I would just emphasize that if you apply for both bodies of work, it is possible that you could receive uh, an, a contract for one and not the other, because as Soledad just pointed out, they are being reviewed completely separately. Thank you. So I'll move us into the uh, request for qualifications rating and review. As we mentioned, each submission of qualifications will be re reviewed separately by each body of work. Uh, we encourage every organization or individual that's submitting qualifications to carefully review the rating criteria. Also, please know the review panel will be closely following the scoring rubric. All qualifications submitted will go through a formal review process, and there is a protest process that is outlined in the RFQ itself. Best Starts for Kids does provide technical assistance. Uh, it's available to support applicants and eliminate barriers that may prevent organizations from seeking funding. The last day to request support and technical assistance is September 9th. What the TA providers can do is assist in determining the appropriate fit between your program and the request for qualifications. They may be able to provide guidance on how to best answer questions and where to find supportive data. They can support submission review, including editing and budget review. However, technical assistance is not grant writing. Uh, the technical assistant consultants also ask that uh, there be a waiting period of at least 24 hours before reaching out to another consultant uh, so that there aren't multiple consultants supporting one submission. Uh, the list of technical assistants that are supporting this RFQ can be found in uh, the document section of Zoom Grants. So if there are any additional questions that may come up throughout the process of gathering your submissions, um, information for submissions, you can email uh, Joanna at dchscontracts at kingcounty.gov. Uh, you, if you're seeking technical assistance, you can contact the providers directly for support. Within the RFQ, there's also a glossary of terms um, that, may, that will list the relevant definitions. 
And on page 13, there's also an application process checklist that would be very helpful in ensuring that your submission is complete. Okay, if you click on the link that we have dedicated for this RFQ, this is what you will see. And up top, you'll see a row of these blue boxes and then these the second row of blue boxes. The one at the top will have descriptions about this RFQ, so you can see a little bit of an overview and the timeline here, and you can always show or hide these. This tab here shows the eligibility for each of the bodies of work. Uh, this is um, where you can go if you have questions. You can also click the contact admin tab and that will send an email directly to us. The library is where we have um, the documents that you'll need to review. So we strongly encourage you to review this document here. This is the actual RFQ that has all the information you need for uh, to be able to apply for this RFQ. And then this here is a list of technical assistance consultants. So if you would like help in piecing together your application, you can click on this link and uh, find a consultant that you would like to work with. And then down here, you'll see the actual application. So these are each of the tabs you'll need to complete for a complete application. They'll start with just some uh, basic information about your organization. The questions here are questions about your organization. And as I said earlier, when you're deciding if you want to apply for both uh, bodies of work, if you'd like to do that in one application, you would click here for both. Narrative questions, uh, which is where if you are going to be applying for both bodies of work in one application, please make sure you're very clear about which responses for which body of work and you would do that here. So you would type in this white box here and there is no save function in Zoom grants. So um, every once in a while as you're typing, go ahead and click outside that box and you'll see um, the word saving flashing in the middle of your screen to say to show that it is saving. You can either enter your answers directly into these text box boxes, or you can type up in a Word document or uh, some other uh, document and then copy and paste them into here. Please note that if you do paste any, um, any text into here, Zoom Grants may not accept any formatting. So if there's bold, underline, bullet points, you may not be able to successfully paste that in. So please clear all formatting before you paste into these text boxes. So you will complete all of the questions here. We have some document requests here and it flags um, under required, highlighted in yellow if the document is required. Down here, you're allowed to upload additional documentation that you would like to be considered in your application. So uh, you can add a few different documents up to here. Please make sure to you look at the checklist uh, for a complete application to make sure you have all the elements in before submitting your application. And this is the, um, so this is the full application. You're always welcome to ask me any questions if anything comes up. If you have any technical difficulties with Zoom grants, you can either click this contact admin button. You can email me at dchscontracts at kingcounty.gov, or you can reach out to Zoom grants technical support if you're having issues. Um, please make note of the, the deadline for this application. There is a time deadline as well, and we cannot accept any applications after that time. So if you're having technical difficulties leading up to that time, please just email your applications directly to me at DCHS contracts at kingcounty.gov uh, to avoid a late application. If you email everything into us, you can still continue to try to submit it on Zoom grants. Um, but if you wait past, I believe it's a 2 p.m. deadline, please double check. Um, we won't be able to accept it. So please make note of that. And I, that I will stop sharing. And are there any other questions? So that is there anything else you wanted me to cover? Thank you, Joanna, for that mini training. Um, if you could please um, share about um, any questions that have been submitted and the responses, what, what can the organization you. expect? So any questions we've received up to this point, we will respond to your email directly and we will also post an amendment. So in that library tab I just showed you, that's where you will see any amendments. So an amendment can mean either the RFQ is changing 
or it can mean um, that we're answering questions that came in. And the reason we do this is so everyone has the same access to all the questions that have come in and all the answers that have been given. So as you email us questions, if you can just be patient um, while we consult the team to make sure we're all in agreement on the answer, um, and then we'll post that to an amendment and respond to your email. Any last thoughts here before we end? Thank you so much to the both of you for being here. And thank you all for uh, watching this video. Thank you so much.